Well, I'm glad to be here this morning, glad to worship, worship together. It's always good to be in the house of the Lord, especially when it's sunny, right? Just the Lord feels a little bit closer when the sun's out. Uh, but I'm glad you guys are here today. We're starting off with this song, Praise, and I just wanted to share a quick a little story about it. Um, Hannah and I got back, I don't know, about probably a month ago from a road trip. We were going to go see all the national parks. And it was going to be just a great kind of vacation before some new things were starting in our life. And it turned out to be a, a road trip of disasters. A lot, of, a lot of things went wrong. And kind of the pinnacle of it was we were in Yellowstone Park uh, driving up this Grants Pass, I think. You get almost to the top and I blow a radiator hose about two hours before sunset and did not know what to do up there. Praise the Lord, I had a little bit of reception, so called some people, got the car off the side of the road, and as we were sitting there, the first thing that came to my mind was, I'll praise in the valley, praise on the mountain. As we're sitting there on top of the mountain looking over, and I was thinking, you know, it's ironic because this feels like the valley even though we're on top of the mountain right now. Um, and just, to, just as I've been reflecting then and, and reflecting back, it's amazing how big those moments feel. Like in my world, we're stuck in the middle of Yellowstone. How expensive is this going to be? Where are we going to sleep? What's all these huge, huge, huge problems that I haven't really thought a lot about since then. And it's only been a month. Imagine 10 years from now how little I'm going to think about those things. Um, and yet the moments where I'm able to be aware of the presence of the Lord. You know, we feel like God is closer at different times, and yet He is always close to us. Those are the moments that I think really um, leave an impact more than the things that feel so big. And so as we open in, in worship this morning, I, I hope that regardless of if you are on the mountain, if you're on the valley, that you're able to make a decision this morning that I will praise the Lord. I know it's easy to, to, to say that at times when it's going good, but there are moments where we have to make a decision that today I'm going to praise, even though it, things are not going good. And the praise might not result in the tow truck coming out of the sky to save you, right? Like you want it to. You think, oh Lord, if I turn to you now, does that mean that everything's going to be all right? It might not. It might get worse. And yet, from, from a human perspective, it might get worse. And yet, I, I challenge you to reflect on the spiritual perspective of things um, because that is so much greater that reality is so much greater in life. so enough said let's worship the lord but would you stand with me this morning and we're gonna lift our hands lift our hearts lift our eyes to the one who has created all things the reason why we are gathered here god we are reminded of your greatness reminded of your power Reminded of your faithfulness in our lives. God, I know if we just took the time to ask, there would be uh, so many big and small testimonies of you moving and working in the midst of us together. And Lord, we are just grateful that we can gather here together and be united in spirit. Lord, as Avril shared last week, Lord, we just pray again that that would be true in this place that we would be united in heart, Lord, because it is your spirit that is giving us direction. Lord, that we'd be able to love one another because it's not the love that we are, are, are coming up on our own strength, Lord, but it is a love that comes from you. We bless your holy name today. Lord, I ask that you would minister to the hearts of us here, God. Speak to us about those things, Lord, that maybe we're going through, those areas where we need you to show up in a mighty way. Lord, even opening our eyes to the scenarios around us, the people around us that, that you want to use us to bless. Lord, let us be a reflection of you in all that we do. Lord, and we ask that you would be glorified here today. In the name of Jesus will be lifted up. Lord, as you look down from heaven on this place, Lord, that this would be a church where you say, that is what I desire the church to be. Lord, we thank you that we are not alone though different times, different places, Lord, but around the world, people are gathering together in your name. People that we will not meet until eternity, God, but we are encouraged by that reality, and we join together with them to praise you today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'll pray.
reign. Praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I praise cause you're faithful. Praise cause you're true. Praise cause there's nobody greater than you. Praise cause the sovereign. Praise cause you reign. Praise cause you rose and
so holy. I don't know if you've taken the time recently to think about the idea that God is holy. And today we're just going to just take a moment right now and just, I want you to think about that. In fact, you could just close your eyes and think about the fact that he is holy. He's above all things. He is pure, righteous, and holy. Father, we thank you for your presence in this place. We thank you that the only possible way we could be holy is through you. And that you have offered holiness to us. You have offered righteousness. You have offered purity. You've offered forgiveness. And for that, we are grateful. So, Lord, I just pray that today your promises, your word would sink deep into our hearts. That we would hear it, we would believe it, we would live it. Lord, bless our time in your presence. In Jesus' name. I'm going to invite you to be seated at this time. I'm going to ask those that are serving communion if you would come up. Before they serve the communion, I want you to just know communion is an act of worship and it's an invitation. You are being invited to a table. You ever been invited to a meal? You can either RSVP or just come to it. Well, you're being invited. We're inviting you to partake with us. But the Lord Jesus is inviting you today into a relationship with him. Now, communion, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be explaining the bread and the cup here in a moment. But let me just say this to start. Communion is an invitation for you to celebrate Jesus and what he's done for you. You do not have to partake in communion. If you're here for the first time and you just... You don't feel comfortable, you don't understand, you don't want to do it, that's, that's totally fine. In fact, Scripture reserves this act of worship for those who believe, who believe that Jesus Christ is the Lord and Savior, those who have a personal relationship with Him. So if, if that is not you, then there is no judgment. You can just pass the tray on, or for whatever reason you choose. If you don't want to partake, you can just pass it on the next person. But there's an invitation today to partake. And, and what I'm going to ask you to do is there's two trays that are going to come down. There's a tray with some bread pieces and there's a tray with cups of juice. I'm going to ask you to take one piece of bread and one cup. But I'm going to ask you to hold on to it and not partake until everyone's been served. And then I will lead us in that. Okay? So, ushers, you may go ahead and serve. As they are serving this bread and cup, I... I want you to think about a few things, and one is they are small symbols, but they have huge significance. And today, as you are being invited to the table, you're being invited by Jesus Christ, and for these reasons, I'm going to read the words from the Apostle Paul out of the book of First Corinthians. He says to the Corinthians, for I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. 
I want to acknowledge a couple things in, in that passage of Scripture. That is, one, communion, or often referred to as the Lord's Supper, is different than baptism in the sense that baptism is uh, a one-time thing where if you have understanding of what the Lord Jesus has done for you and you want to declare that publicly, then you are water baptized. But you don't have to keep getting water baptized every time you have a really good day or or you feel you need a change in your life. You are baptized that one time you declare to the Lord, I want to serve you and I'm going to follow you. Communion's different in that we do it continually. We will continually do it as we serve the Lord. It's an act of worship because it's a proclamation again and again what, why we got baptized. In fact, I want to say this. Everything that takes place here on a Sunday morning and any other time during the week as the body of Christ is all because of what we're celebrating through the bread and the cup. We wouldn't be singing this morning if Jesus had not given his body and poured out his blood for us. But we have victory in him. And so we can sing if we believe that and understand that we can sing from our heart what he has done. And so when we go back into singing here in a moment, I want to encourage you, look at the words on the wall there. And, and if you can sing that with your heart, do it. Do it. But it's all, every song, every prayer, everything we do is all based on what we're celebrating through the bread and the cup. This small piece of bread represents the body of Jesus that was given for us. He laid his life down for us. For us. Scripture says that while we were still sinners, he died for us. In other words, he didn't wait until we cleaned ourselves up because we couldn't clean ourselves up. And, and God loved you so much, he needed to provide that cleansing, but it needed to be a sacrifice. And, and in the Old Testament, it talks about how, how um, everything had to be cleansed by the blood and life is in the blood, and that's, that's where the cup com comes in. The body held the blood. And, and God came in the flesh. He, he had a body. He came so he could be the sacrifice for us, the payment for us. The final sacrifice, all the Old Testament sacrifices all pointed toward Jesus Christ. He is the Lamb of God. And his body he gave to us that we might receive from him. Within his body was his blood. And his blood was spilled out for us because there were promises within that blood. And the promise was of cleansing. I mean, this is the greatest invitation you'll ever, you'll ever know, being invited to the table of the Lord. And today could be the greatest day of your life. In fact, today, if you are here and you know, you know that it's time for you to turn your life over to Jesus Christ and you want to accept that invitation, but you passed the communion by, it's not too late. If you would like to take communion and, and you pass it by, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand and one of the ushers will bring you the bread and the cup. So if you're here and you'd like to take communion and you had to pass by, you raise your hand. They'd be happy to, to serve you. This is an invitation. And with this invitation, the point I want to make is he gave it. He gave it. He gave his very best for you that you would have his life in you. So I'm going to pray and then we're going to partake together and then we're going to go back into song. So we're worshiping, we're worshiping in prayer, we're worshiping in song, and we're worshiping through communion because we're acknowledging Jesus Christ and honoring him in these emblems. So Father, we thank you. We thank you for your body which was given for us we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you laid your life down for us. You knew 
There was nothing we could do to take away our own sin. There was nothing we could do to fix our own past. But you took it upon yourself to give your body and lay it down that a sacrifice, a holy sacrifice, could be made that would make us pure and holy in your sight. And so, Father, I pray that you would bless this bread now as we partake in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's have the bread. Lord, your body was the vessel for your blood. And there is power in the blood of Jesus because the only possible way we could be cleansed is through the spilling of your blood because there's life in the blood. God, you gave the greatest sacrifice and you paid it all. You paid the price for us. And so, Lord, we pray as we take this cup, we pray that you would bless it as we acknowledge you and worship you in this act. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Take the cup. There are little, on the chair in front of you, there's these little circles in the metal part there. You can place your cup. Jesus paid it all. That's why we do what we do. So today, I just want to invite you, re accept the invitation. Accept the invitation to Jesus Christ. Accept the invitation to sit with him. Accept the invitation to honor him and worship him. So would you stand again today as we go back into worshiping him through song and we celebrate what he's done for us? He paid it all. Boy, I hope that has meaning for you today. Because if you've ever been in debt, if you've ever been to a place where you didn't have the money to pay a bill, I want you to know at one point in your life, you were at a place, you, you had a debt so big you couldn't pay it. But Jesus paid it for you. He paid it all. Let's celebrate that. Oh, praise the one who paid 
debt continue. Oh, praise the one who paid my debt and raised his life up from the dead. Oh, Jesus, this is our testimony, Jesus. Jesus paid it all. And Jesus paid it all. Oh, to him I owe. My sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. My sin, my sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. He washed it white as snow. Jesus. Mm -hmm. You reign above it all. You reign above it all. Over the universe and over there is no higher name. Jesus, you reign above it all. The reign of darkness now has ended in the kingdom of light, in the kingdom of light. Forever on to your dominion you're the king of my life you're the king of my life you reign above it all you reign above it all over the universe and over every heart there is no higher name Jesus you reign the cross the work was finished God you poured out your life just to give us new life now from the lips of the forgiven here an anthem arise is Jesus your alive you reign above it all you reign above
Lord, we declare that you reign above it all. Lord, it doesn't matter what it is. You reign above our suffering. You reign above our obstacles. You reign above our debts. You reign above our fears. You reign above our doubts. You reign. And so, Lord Jesus, we're here today to proclaim you reign. You reign, Lord Jesus. You reign. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I pray that, that this week, whenever we're faced with something, we would declare that Jesus reigns. We would declare that Jesus reigns above it all. Father, we're so grateful. We're so grateful for what you've done for us. We're so grateful for who you are. I pray that today is the beginning of a new life for everyone that's in this room. Lord, those that have served you for years, I pray, God, that there would be a new level today. You would take us to a new level, a new understanding, a new passion. For those that have come in here today and they, they don't have a relationship with you, they they might not even be sure why they're here, Lord. But I pray that today, that God, that you let them know exactly why they're here. That they have a living encounter with the living God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Lord, you're good. We acknowledge your goodness right now, Lord. We acknowledge that you're in this room, Lord. I just feel like we need to just wait on him for a moment, if you don't mind. Let's just quietly wait. It's like a hammer that crushes and breaks down walls. The word of the Lord, the word of the Lord is a seed that is planted in our hearts. Father, I pray that your word would go deep in us today. That, Father, new life would be produced through that seed of your word today in us. God, may hope, may hope be the result of our gathering together today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So, Father, I just want to commit this time to you, and I just pray, God, make this personal for everyone that's here. good God Father I pray for anyone here that is struggling with your goodness the idea of your goodness while their life seems to be crumbling Father I pray that today there would be a realization that you are good no matter what we're going through you are good so Lord rise that hope within us God I pray freedom so, Lord, release your Holy Spirit in our presence. Produce new life here today, Lord. Be glorified. And, Father, I pray for people that haven't laughed in a long time would laugh today. People that haven't perhaps cried in a long time and need a good cry, they'd cry today. People, God, that haven't just, just they haven't felt stable. They, they just feel like their life is wishy-washy. I just pray that today stability and steadfastness would come to them. Lord, may your face shine upon us today, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God is good. Will you just take one minute and just turn and say hello to somebody, and then we're going to...
get on with things. If you can just, just greet one another real quickly. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Great to have all of you here today at Park Ridge Community Church, where we love God, we love people, and we love to make disciples. And we are so happy that you are here with us today. If this is your first time, or maybe it's your second time and you've never done this before, I'm going to invite you to take one of these Get Connected cards out of the seat pocket in front of you. If you wouldn't mind filling that out, you can just, you don't have to fill out all of uh, all the boxes, only the ones that you feel you want to and are appropriate. If you want to f- uh, hand it into our connection center in the lobby on our way out, they'll exchange that for a free uh, gift card for free drink at our coffee stand out here. You can also fill out a digital uh, connect form online and we invite you to do that. It's really our way of just kind of connecting with you. We're not going to spam you. We're not going to send you junk mail. We just want to connect with you and uh, let you know that you're, you're not walking this life alone. We're here for you. We love you. We'd love you to uh, be a part of this church and see how we might be able to serve you and help you get better connected. Uh, I want to thank everyone who volunteered at that car show yesterday that was such a cool event, and we had people, I'm surprised no one got heat stroke. We had volunteers that were out there serving in the heat. It was so great. This is the first time we've ever done one of these, and we had, I believe it was 42 cars actually register, but we had approximately 50 hot rods show up, and it was so much fun. Uh, Don Wickstrom spoke. We had a DJ out there. We had food trucks. People were mingling. Every, every hot rod owner that I personally talked to said, this is awesome. I will be here next year. Are you doing this next year? It was just really, really great. So thank you for praying for it. Thank you for attending it if you came. And a special thank you to those who volunteered because it, it was a lot of work. But uh, we pulled it off, and I believe God used it in a big way. So thank you very much for that. There you go. That's... It's always hard being the first one, isn't it? You're like, should I? I don't know. Okay. I guess it's worthy. Uh, Barbara Sobel is visiting us from Mexico, one of our missionaries from Mexico. Over here. Barbara, would you stand up? God bless you, Barbara. Great. She's going to be in town for a little while. I didn't know she was even going to be here today, so it was great to have you here. God bless you. Uh, I want to just do a, a few quick announcements. Today, this afternoon, we actually have a baptism out at the Sabranke's cabin out at Howard Lake, or Lake Howard, sorry. Uh, the the baptism's going to be at 3.30, and then after the baptism, there's going to be hot dogs and burgers, but it's a potluck style, so if you want to if you want to bring some, something to share, some chips, some dessert, whatever, we're going to be baptizing seven people, and we're very, very excited about that. And yeah, that's, that's another worthy one right there. There you go. <laughs> that person's like, okay, I got this one. I got this one. That's good. Uh, it's going to be fun. It's, it's going to be great weather. It's great. But on your bulletin at the top, it gives you directions. That's actually the neighbor's house. And we do that because we just like to make them nervous and pull cars in there and eat their food while we're up there. So it's, no, that's not why. Pastor Brad's, uh, for some reason, when you put it in the GPS, it doesn't always take you right there. So that's the closest neighbor's property, but you will see cars. Will there be signs out there, Brad, or someone standing there going, it's this one? Okay, you'll be standing. All right, so we invite you to come out for that. That's going to be fantastic. There's been a lot of uh, questions 
Last week, this room was shifted different. So you were facing that way last week, and we heard a lot of great comments about that. And one of the most popular questions today has been, how come it's not that way today? And how we It was kind of a test. There's a lot that goes into doing something like that, but we will most likely be changing that this fall. But um, so there's the answer to your question, and we had a great time doing it. We're back to normal today, but it, th this is good. But just stay continued because it might be changing in the fall. All right. Um, we're going to get on with things because we have, a, we have a great day. We have a guest speaker today. Actually, first, sorry, before I do this, let me just say this. There are offering boxes in the back. We do not take up an offering here. We don't pass the plate, but we do believe in giving. As I emphasized during communion that, that God gave his very best, we believe as imitators of God, we should give our very best. Um, when all we have comes from God, it's only right and biblical that we take a portion of that and acknowledge that back to God. And so uh, if this is your first time here, you're just a guest, there's absolutely no pressure in that. But we encourage our people, we encourage you as you're following Christ to give back to him and acknowledge him. And if you would like to do that, you can give either online or we have two boxes in the back. There's some giving envelopes back there. You can do that. Now, before I introduce our speaker, we're going to see a, a video before we do that. But I want to tell you a little bit about him before we show the video. His name is Don Wickstrom. He is a pastor in New Glarus, Wisconsin. I, I go there usually every year at least once and preach, and I've built a friendship with him and his pastor and church, his his, the other pastors there and uh, the people in the church, great place. In fact, New Glarus is the Leavenworth of Wisconsin. It's, it looks, if I was to blindfold you and take it off, you would think you're in Leavenworth. And they have a storefront there where their, their church meets, Grace Church meets. It's a really, really cool place. But not only is he a pastor, he's an entrepreneur. Not only that, he's a race car driver. And I got to see him race at Pikes Peak a few weeks back in Colorado, and he did so well. He got second in his division, fifth overall out of 60 cars. He got fifth out of the race. He is referred to as the fastest pastor, and he is the fastest pastor. Uh, he has a ministry called Chasing Hope. In the back, there is a table with a whole bunch of information and free giveaways. Everything on that table in the back is free. Don will be back there later after service if you want to meet him, if you want to get an autograph, if you want to get some of the information that he has. We'd love for you to stop by there. But I don't want to take up any more time. Would you put your eyes on the screen? We're going to start with a video that I want you to pay close attention to. Thank you. When you're set with a date, your life could expire. Good morning. Thank you. Man, it is so good to be here. I appreciate every single one of you for taking time out of your morning uh, to come see us here. And I just want to thank Pastor Brad and Pastor Brett for having us chasing hope and I am second here. It is an honor and a privilege to be here. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. I'm still alive. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what, um, I'm just going to preface everything by this. The suffering that I've endured in life has been the best part of my life. And it's because of Christ Jesus. And I just, uh, it's always hard to think about where we're at right now, especially when it's hard, especially when it's dark, and say, where am I going to be? We, we instantly want out of anything that isn't fun, <laughs> whether it be a health issue whether it be the loss of someone, whether it be a broken relationship, whether it be a change in jobs or a change in a home, whether it be a loss of money or hard times of paying bills, 
It's just, uh, it, we just instantly want out of it. That's just the truth. And so many times, my wife would tell me this all the time. Enjoy the journey. No matter how hard, enjoy the journey. And what happens is sometimes we're robbed of that for a lot of different reasons. And, and I just want to kind of just talk about that in, in my story. So I just want to start back. We'll start with little Don. So as you heard, at eight years old, I had made this dream to go up Pikes Peak. I saw Bobby Unser go up on the nightly news. Me and my cousin were waiting to watch Star Trek. Yes, I was a nerd. Um, still am. Uh, it's not a problem. It's a superpower. Don't worry. But I remember turning to him and saying, I'm going to do that. And, and what happens in life is that was a dream. I mean, that was something that I just couldn't believe. Like, you race up the side of the mountain. I thought that was the coolest thing ever. And it was just a year later, my aunt had offered for my family and I to ride in the RV with her and my uncle and my cousins to go to Colorado. And we were in Denver. And of course, being just about 45 miles away from Denver, I knew it was America's Mountain, Pikes Peak. Now, what's funny is just a couple years before this, my family was homeless. A couple years before this, the teachers had sat my parents down and let them know, and the term they used back then was, your son's retarded. But my dad gave in, and we drove an RV up Pikes Peak. Now, back then, it was dirt. And my aunts and my sisters were in the back crying because they were mortified and terrified my dad hates heights, but he drove up the mountain. And he held on to my ankles, allowing me to look out the, ed- out the RV so I could see the edge of the cliffs. I will tell you that it was just a few years later that life for me began to encroach on hopeless, even more so. You'd think homeless would be able to do it, and that did it. That, that was very hopeless, but what happened is I began the journey in school, and when you're different and you're in middle school, kids pick on you for that. And there was someone in my life who was relentless. They were absolutely relentless. And I began to hate myself more than they did. So much so that probably more than I care to admit, suicide was on my mind. In fact, I can tell you there were well over 23 times I took a rope and put it on a tree down by a river called The Race, ironically. And what would always go in my mind was this. I always had cars I was working on. I bought my first car at 10 and a half. I got my first job at 10. <laughs> And I remember so many times I would go and hang that rope and I'd be like thinking this through and and, and the one thing that would come to mind is like you can't leave an unfinished car for your parents. That's not fair. (laughs) And yeah, and I can honestly say that's what saved my life. And I would always just forfeit that solution to ending my life because I didn't want to leave mom and dad with a car that wasn't finished. And me and my dad talked about that several years later, and he said, you always had a car not finished. (laughs) It always drove us nuts. But I began to accept all these identities and all these things, right? And I suffered in silence. I didn't feel like I could tell my parents. There were only two people in my life who knew who I am so thankful for those people. And then I turned 18, as the story said. I was going to go to to be a race car driver and... A full-time mechanic. That was my dream. And I had all this money saved up. And my dad said, what about going to college? And that was the first time where anybody offered me something that might have taken some thought (laughs) and the use of my brain. And I lost the bet with my dad. And he said, you have all this money saved up for a car. Just go one year. And in that endeavor, while I went to school, I got a 1.3 my first semester, I think it was. I was doing spectacular. I remember telling my dad, it's better than a 1.2. He's like, well, I'm glad you learned something. But during that, I saw all this hypocrisy and all these things. And 
of all these different religions. They were all the same to me. They all were hypocrites. And so of the major five religions, I set out to prove them wrong. And the first four were relatively easy. See, I did it archaeologically, I did it historically, I did it prudentially, and I did it preservation, and then copy. And they were all pretty easy. I got the Christianity. I thought it would be a slam dunk. And a year and a half later, I was so angry. See, I didn't want Christianity to be true. Because then I could still blame things, right? I could blame everything for my circumstances. It was, I, could never, I could never have to come to the reality that I need to move beyond it. I was so angry. I was at a drinking party and I just got done arm wrestling and me and the guy had a little bit of an argument. And my fist told him what I thought of it. And I was walking up the stairs and there was a gentleman with a wristband that said WWJD. And I looked at that and had a question mark. And this guy could barely stand, and I had, a, I had my fill of alcohol at that time. And I said, what does that mean? And he said, well, it means what would Jesus do? And I laughed at him, and I said, you're an idiot. <laughs> I said, I could tell you what he'd do. He wouldn't be drinking. He'd be telling all of us how we're going to hell because we're steeped in sin, but he'd also tell us how much he loved us and he died on the cross for us to save us from that sin. And he resurrected three days later, defeating it. And he just looked at me and he ran away. <laughs> I, never, I never saw the guy again. But it made me so angry that I talk that way. See, I knew historically, I knew truthfully that Jesus was who he says he was. I, I knew the Bible was historically accurate. We've not had one modern archaeological or even old archaeological find that contradicts the Bible. Do you realize this? Do you realize there's no one who has more historical prudence and evidence and documentation of antiquity than Jesus? And yet the world wants to tell us it's a farce, it's a lie. For six months, I could tell you how to get to heaven, but I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. I liked my sin. <laughs> That's just the truth. But I was also the most miserable person because of the sin. And I can remember so many times at night lying awake where I literally felt like the wind was blowing through me. I was so empty. But I had everything. I had a wonderful job. I was, an, I was the youngest engineer the corporation ever bought, had, had ever been part of. I, I was successful. I bought, listen, you know you arrived when you can buy a bright yellow Ford Ranger. Okay? I had arrived. The world told me I was successful, I should be happy, and I was miserable. And all I could keep thinking about were the identities and the sufferings that came with everything. See, the world will tell us this lie, right? And I shared this yesterday a little bit. All of our pain and suffering is for no good use. Every tear, every loss, every heartbreak, every sleepless night, every broken relationship is to our detriment. It produces no good. But God says different. God, this is different, and, and that has been so evident in so many times in my life, and I'll explain that in a minute. But as I went through life, I finally gave myself, my life, to Jesus Christ. And I prayed a really stupid prayer after, you know, I, I, hadn't, I didn't know the church way to accept Jesus. I just knew the Bible said, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, you shall be saved. So it was like middle of the night in this factory. I was filling in for one of the technicians because, of course, I was the youngest engineer. I got the junk stuff, you know. And I was crying out on the floor of this factory, forklifts whizzing by me. And I told God, I hadn't lived the way you wanted nor you intended me to be. I recognize that. I've gone my way. I've done my thing. And God, I am so broken. I am so hopeless. 
But I believe that you came fully man, fully God on this earth. That you died a sinner's death being sinless because you wanted me to know life and know it more abundantly in the eternal realms of heaven. And so you died on that cross and you rose three days later from me. And so God, I give you everything. I give you my life and I give you what just doesn't seem fair. I give you all the junk, all the sin, all my perceptions, all the identities, everything. And Lord, and this was the stupid part of the prayer, wherever you want me to go, whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. I would love to tell you in that instant, I felt completely different. I just was broken. But about three days later, I woke up getting ready for work. It was summer break in between my, my sophomore and junior year of college. And all of a sudden, I wasn't as stressed. And what I realized is the standard changed. I went from looking at all these things that were worldly based, what would bring me success and happiness and climb, you know, change your life, a hope, right? All these hopes that were going to give me the hope of what would make me feel better and fix me. And none of those hopes were realized. It wasn't until I found Jesus that my standard changed and I could begin to look at eternity that I finally had a hope that without a doubt 100% would be realized. And that was Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. That was accepting the light of the world in my life. And I, what had happened is I accepted him and he was inside of me but he wasn't burning as bright as he should because I had, I had junk. And I want to read something, you guys, out of, of Romans 5. We'll start. Um, let's just start with verse 5, verse 1. I mean, <laughs> chapter 1, verse 5. It says, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith, into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. That hope of the glory of God isn't a hope that my hope my job will go. It isn't a hope that things will change and get better. It's not a hope that I hope that this promotion makes me feel better. I hope my girlfriend or my wife make me feel better. I hope that more money will solve my issues. It's a hope that will be realized. It's the only hope that will be realized, and that's Christ Jesus, and that's what the saying. It says glory in that. Re re resound with that. And then he goes on to say this, which I love. It says, not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings. Er, what? He set us up. Paul set us up here. I'm, I'm, wait, wait, wait. I'm supposed to glory in my sufferings? And he says, yeah, because we know that sufferings produce perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not disappoint us. See, so many times we want hope, we want hope, we want ease, but we don't want to pay the price for hope. Lord, I'm suffering. When I got cancer, I remember just telling my wife, like, we're going to fight. And she's like, yeah, I know. I said, no, no, we're going to fight. And then she understood. She's like, yeah. I said, I want to go down in my last breath, punching the devil one more time in the face. I want him rejoicing because I'm, I, his pain in the butt is gone. And that's how I want to go. It gave me an urgency to realize that not only how much more do I need Jesus, but how much more I need him in my life, but there's people who don't know him. People who are suffering, and here's the thing is, we, we look at it and, and we, we accept Jesus and we think our suffering should be done. Or maybe we're not accepting Jesus because why would I suffer if there's a Lord God? And we forget that suffering produces things. 
I think when God looks at it, he, listen, let's just, what time am I supposed to be done? Sorry. I don't remember. Do, like, do I got, is it 1130 I'm supposed to be done? Okay. Uh, sorry. Here, here's, here's why, here, let's just break one thing down. Can I just step down? Is it okay if I step down here? Can we just break one thing down really quick? This is, this is I'm going to give you love 101. How many of you could be a little bit better with love? I could. How many of you need to realize something? So what, what's your two's name? Nathan and Hannah? Nathan and Hannah. Let me just use you two as an example. Nathan, if before you left for work, you had to take Hannah, put handcuffs on her, then handcuff her to a pipe in a closet, lock the closet, lock all the doors and windows, and leave work, then come home, undo all that, and then hold a gun to her head and say, say you love me. Would you feel loved? No. That's called dictatorship. How do you leave home now? Do you do any of that? And when, when you come home, do you, she's like, yeah, no. When you come home, do you have to force her to say I love you? No. You know why? Does, does that feel like love? It doesn't feel like love, Nathan, when she does that? Yeah, okay, I'm like, all right, hold on, we're going to do a counseling session here. Um, so why don't you, no, because no, there's a difference, see, there's two things that need to exist for love, but we all want love and we don't want to accept this. One is free will. You cannot have love without free will. And the second is truth. And then there's subsidiaries of that, like grace and mercy. But those two pivot. If one is corrupted, you don't have love. And here's the remarkable and yet really poopy thing about that. Is that love exists in free will. But it also means that in free will, we choose to do whatever we want. And the Bible even tells us, for it's the free will of others and the sins of others that we suffer. Sometimes your suffering isn't even your fault. In fact, the majority of times it probably isn't. But what happens is we want love, but we don't want it with the cost of free will and truth. And why do I say this? Because I get so many times on tour, and I've, I've dealt with it in my own life. Pastor Donna, I don't understand. Why is it little kids die of cancer and you're still here? I said, that, that haunts me. I said, I 100% totally get where you're coming from. And I said, I'll tell you this. I don't understand everything because there is God's sovereignty. But what I do know is this. Free will affects us. Because sin runs rampant. And we have no idea how sin interweaves. But here's what I know is if God intervened every single the way, every way we wanted him, every moment we wanted him, guess what? Free will ceases to exist. And now we're back to dictatorship and love can't exist. Could you imagine being the creator of the universe saying, I love you so much that I'm going to give you my son, Jesus Christ, and I'm going to create this thing, love, and I'm still going to allow free will to exist. He loved you that much that he wasn't even willing to violate his own love and take away free will because he loves you that much. And the result of that is, yes, there's sin and we suffer because of it. And what happens is in our sufferings, we begin to blame God. We begin to blame other people. We get to blame all these things. And God's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You're missing it. What he says is, I may not have wanted you to go through these things, but I'm going to tell you right now, if you remain in me, I'll remain in you. And in the storms of life, I can't take you over the tornado, but I promise you I'll be the anchor that joins to you and keeps you grounded, and the tornado may come, and it may go, but you'll still be standing. How many of us have had such a hard day where we're like, Lord, I can't take it anymore. I can't do this anymore. And we wake up the next day. You're still here. Guess what? If you've got breath in your lungs, and you're still breathing, he's got a purpose for you. He's got a plan for you. And it's the creator of the universe knows this. And I think there's times where he looks at circumstances and says, listen, 
I don't want that to happen to you, but I'm going to allow it because what I see on the other side of the suffering is something remarkable that you don't see. That suffering and go through is one of the most beautiful things you're ever going to see. And I, and, and I came up with this illustration about 3 o'clock this morning, um, <laughs> honestly, and then my wife kind of helped me pull up. I actually made this vase for uh, Pastor Brett, but he turned it down. <laughs> actually, I actually came up to him and said, I, I want to give you a gift just thanking you, and, he, and this is what he does. <laughs> Are you preparing me to be a grandpa again, or I don't know. Anyways, um, but what happens is we have suffering, and what suffering does, it's a process, right? It produces perseverance. In Christ Jesus, we have all we need to persevere, right? It says, I will never leave you nor forsake you, the word says. And what happens is in this process, suffering is pressure. And the pressure takes off things off of us. And it starts allowing the revelation of who's living inside of us to work. And it's not comfortable. We go through pain, trauma. Listen, I, I've, I've been there. I've been through abuse. I've been through suicide. I've been through self-doubt. I've been through cancer. I've been through the loss of loved ones near and dear. But God says, if you're with me, if you love me, I will work it for the good. And what happens is he begins to work through that pressure of suffering to produce perseverance. And that perseverance as we stay and remain, we're like, God, I'm going to remain here. I'm going to have the perseverance. I'm going to rely on you. You are my anchor. You are the wind in my sails. And as we continue to allow that process to unfold, he's working. And he begins to unfold this absolute incredible thing in us. And we become a whole different shape, a whole different new creature. And then what happens is as we start to see the process produce the fruit of suffering, we get hope. We get hope. And see, hope is worth it. Hope. It's worth clinging to. It's worth it. And all of a sudden, I'm refined. I'm shaped by the Father. And all can see the light shining within me. Because perseverance from that suffering was produced. And character from that perseverance. And hope from that character. And hope does not disappoint us and that's something that we have to grab onto is the devil wants us to blame God oh God why did you take that person oh God why did you why did you cause this cancer oh God why did you cause this problem because he wants us to focus on the problem and not the problem solver he wants us to focus on the hopelessness and not the hopefulness He's tricky, you all. I always tell everybody, the first thing cancer does is robs you of hope. I've, I've, I've sat through it. I've sat through it with people, hundreds and thousands of people, who when they got the diagnosis, they said, I lost all hope. The floor came out from underneath me. See, it wants to stamp this death sentence on us and all it's saying, all cancer was saying was, your flesh is going to die. And my Lord was saying, but your soul will live on. And you'll be in heaven with me. And then all of a sudden I'm like, I know people that don't know that. What's going on? See, people need your story. That's, that, if I've learned anything in this whole incredible mess, crazy life of mine, that people need your story. Listen, my story is not special. There's people in this room, a lot of you have done more remarkable things than I have and been through so much more. And yet we want to blame God instead of saying, God, look at what you've brought me through. God, look at, you're still carrying me today. I'm still alive. I'm still sucking air. I'm still moving. And God's saying, because I still have purpose for you. I still have a calling for you. I still got things for you to do. And you want to know something? When the assignment's done, if you know Jesus Christ, you're going to a place that is going to be so remarkable to what's here. And some days that's the temptation. 
is, boy, heaven's looking pretty good right now. (laughs) And God says, come on, let's go. I've got things for you to do. And we begin to realize that this world has nothing for us. Has nothing for us. And and I just I just love how it says, and hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into the hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. The wonderful thing is when suffering comes and it produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope. It is because the helper and the advocate that Jesus tells us he's going to send us in John. It says, though I will be with you for a little while, I'll leave. But with you, I will leave a helper and an advocate, the Holy Spirit. I don't know where you're at today, and and, and I don't know what's going on in your heart. But I do know one thing. We have a common bound, bind, common ground. And that's suffering. We've all suffered. There's some of you in this room who have suffered needlessly. That it wasn't your fault. Someone abused you. Someone hurt you. And there's some of you who have abused others or hurt others. And you're suffering because of that. Some of you are suffering financially. Some of you are suffering mentally. I know what it is to suffer with anxiety and depression. For those of you who are in that place, I always say this, I say, anxiety lives in the future and depression in the past. That's where they come from. But today we have the inconvenience of them intersecting. But God's bigger. He's mightier. And maybe you're suffering because you're grieving over a relationship that was lost. suffering because the nights seem so much longer because because the days are so short. Maybe you're suffering because you don't understand your purpose. You don't feel like you have value in the world and I'll tell you this right now that no matter what kind of suffering you do, there's some truths that God wants you to know. Number one is that you're priceless and that he loves you. He loves you. He loves you and he loves you. And he says, I love you so much that I gave up my priceless possession, my son, for your behalf. That through his death and resurrection, you can know life and know it more abundantly. The next thing is, is he knew you before you were even born. So he knit you together in your mother's womb. If he's, if he's the man, the being that knit you together in your mother's womb, so the very fabric of your life he knows your intended design purpose and calling and it might be it might be a CEO it might be a janitor they're equally important they're equally as significant and they're equally as heavy but there's a process and suffering to go to that what happens in that is he shapes us into our intended design See, underneath all the muck and the mire, he reveals who we truly are. And God will never, ever change you into something you were intended to be. Sin will, but not the Savior. The other thing I want you to know is that you don't have to carry it. Father wanted a way for you to be in heaven forever and ever and ever. And he says, all you have to do is just lay it down at the cross. And what we pick up is the strength of Jesus, the graciousness of God, the mercy of a loving Father.
lastly, maybe you don't know Jesus. Like Pastor Brett said earlier, he knows you. He knows you. He knows every thought, word, and deed. He knows your innermost, darkest secret. And he says, come. There's nothing that disqualifies you from coming to the cross and laying your life before him and picking up Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I believe God's in this room. I, I, I know he is. I know the Holy Spirit here and he's tugging on some of your hearts. And the next thing that's going to be tempting for you is to stay in the same place you've been because of worry and fear. But I believe the Holy Spirit, there's several of you here in this room that, that God's prodding that we need to move. It's okay we're suffering, but we need to move. We need to stop wallowing in it. We need to be like the bison and not the cow. You know the difference between a bison and a cow? The cow will run away from the storm and the storm catches them. And it lasts longer and longer because they can't out chase it. So the storms move the cow and it catches them and it lasts a lot longer. The bison turn headlong and run into the storm. Fiercer storm lasts a lot longer short a month time Jesus gives us the strength to run headlong into the storm and if you don't know him as Lord and Savior suffering is so miserable but he says listen if you're in me I'll turn all things for the good of those who love me to his perfect and pleasing will what we're going to do is we're going to have a, a prayer team worship's going to close. Worship team's going to lead us in some songs here. I would pray that if that's you, there is no judgment here. This is a safe place in which we love you, and we want to pray for you because we believe in the power of prayer. Jesus, who wielded the ultimate authority and power we've ever seen on, heaven, on earth, used prayer. And that same power is given to us as believers through the Holy Spirit. And we want to pray for you. And so worship team's going to take us, and, and we'll have the prayer teams, if they could come on up. And we'll be praying for you guys. And after they're done, we'll, we'll close, okay? But I, I really, I really hope you don't miss this opportunity to receive some healing this morning. Thank you, guys. sing through that one more time. I don't want you to be shy today. If what Don had to say has connected in your heart and your spirit where you're at right now, take, take the opportunity. Take advantage of this time today. Come up and have someone pray with you, encourage you. Don't walk out of here carrying the same load you came in with. 
So let's sing that song one more time. And I want to invite you, if you have any prayer need, come on up. We'd love to pray with you. Uh, and then we'll, we'll close here shortly. Thank you. Father, we thank you that you're our healer. We thank you, Lord, that there's no obstacle too big for you. Lord, we thank you, God, that you have saved Don, that he could come and give us a message of hope today. We thank you for the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. And God, I pray that that hope would resonate in our hearts and our minds today. I pray, Father, as we continue through this week today, that hope would rise up within, within us. Every time we're faced with a fear, every time we're faced with a doubt or some form of suffering. Father, we pray that you would produce through our suffering. God, I just commit everyone here to you in the name of the Lord and into your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to ask if we can just have music continue to play for a while. If you have prayer, look, we're here to see God do things. We're, we're not in a rush. We want God to meet you where you're at. So we want to invite you to continue coming up here. Don, in a little while, will be in the back there to visit with you. You can stop by his table, check things out. I want to encourage you to follow ChasingHope.com. Uh, follow his ministry on, and I am second on social media. Hope to see you back here this next week. Thank you so much for being here. Please, if you need prayer, please come on up. The rest of you, God bless you. There's a baptism at 3.30 out at Lake Howard. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. God bless you. Thank you so much.